Well, we know that the Bears are going quarterback. We know that the Commanders are going quarterback. We know that the Patriots likely, if they don't trade that spot, will go quarterback at three. Then you've got the Cardinals and the Chargers, assuming they don't trade out, yeah. not quarterback there or there. Then you got the Giants at six. And let's listen to Daniel Jones. I'll share my views after we hear from Daniel Jones on the possibility of the Giants putting a quarterback's name on the card at number six. You know, the nature of our of our business, um, it's a competitive uh, league. So, uh, you know, the best way to handle that, I think, is to focus on, on what I'm doing, focus on myself and making sure that I'm, you know, one healthy and then ready to play good football. So, um, you know, that's what I can control. That's what... Um, what I can do to to uh, help myself and the team. If you're healthy, um, you know this summer in training camp, which you hope to be, and going on into the season, you feel you're the best quarterback that the Giants could have to start their season with. I do, yes. What else is he going to say? I mean, look at that smile. Like, yeah, what what am I going to say? No, no, they could do better than me. They could throw a rock and do better than me. <laughs> you're right. I mean, uh, look here. Here's the difference between the Giants and the other teams looking for quarterbacks. And and let's stipulate, and I think you'll agree with me, Bears, Commanders, Patriots, Giants, Vikings, Raiders, Broncos. 13 top picks, seven teams looking. The Giants have a guy on his second contract. The Giants have a guy that they decided a year ago was the guy. So, I, I mean, that's what separates them. That's what makes exactly. it more difficult. Right. And and if you're Joe Shane, the GM of the Giants, or Brian Dayball, the head coach, do you want a guy that's going to be parked for a year behind Jones and maybe even behind Drew Locke, or do you want a difference maker? We talked about Giants yeah. draft needs not that long ago. Right. The cupboard is freaking bare. There's not one position. offensive player, right? Right. We talked about well, offensive player that can make a play and ha- make something happen. That's what we said, right? And you know, if if anything, now the problem is the Cardinals. If they take Marvin Harrison Jr., the Chargers take I don't know Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunes. I mean, they at least get one of the top three receivers. Yeah. At number six, right? Assuming that the Cardinals and the Chargers stay put and draft receivers, but. It, to me, that's what that's what would make more sense than throwing Daniel da- Daniel Jones overboard now, especially since you're probably going to be at best getting the fourth quarterback off the list. Yeah, I I, I mean, you know, again, I, I think you're right that it probably would look like you're going to get the fourth quarterback. Now, you know, how you have those quarterback graded that that would be one thing to talk about. You hit on the other right point, right? They need a guy that makes a difference, right? Uh, by all due accounts, right, and I'm expecting Monty Osfort and the Cardinals, right, and Monty being from New England and needing a safe pick. I expect them to go Marvin Harrison Jr. I think the Chargers, if they stay put, I don't think John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh seems like a wide receiver at number five type of guy. I would think it might go offensive line or something more about the physicality of the football team. Maybe they tried to trade down. The Giants, by all due accounts, could have Malik Neighbors there, who, as you've heard me say, I think is phenomenal. I mean, special type of receiver. And I know this for a fact that there's a lot of teams in football that have Malik Neighbors as the number one receiver in the draft. I would bet you that there's more teams in the draft in the first round that have Malik Neighbors as a higher grade than Marvin Harrison Jr. That would be my assessment. Not that I've talked to all 32 teams, but you know I talked to and text with a lot of people, and that's certainly some of the feedback I got there. But it'll be interesting. I don't feel like the Giants drafting a quarterback, I I feel like would be almost career suicide to a degree for Dayball and, and, and Joe Shane. Right? I do. I mean, it's year three. It's a big year. We're going to add more distractions and problems to the, the, the situation and not fill, you know, voids and needs, right, for the football team right now. I know there's the political play that you bring up that's very real of like, hey, we draft a quarterback. We can get another year and do that. 
But I don't think that's guaranteed in this current didn't environment. Help, didn't help him after after they drafted Jones. Exactly didn't help right. Gilliland. I was going to say, ask Matt Nagy about that with Justin Fields. Tell him how that went. Uh, get, call him up. Matt Nagy on line nine. Oh, yep, I did that. I'm fired, and I'm on the, uh, the Chiefs now. So that's where I just doesn't seem like a Giants type of move. But, again, I've been wrong before. I've been shocked before, and uh, I'm very intrigued about what they're going to do at six. I think the more realistic – outcome would be the Giants being the potential spot where is that why they're saying it right that I just crossed my mind are they saying all this or are they letting rumors out because they know damn the Raiders the Broncos they want a quarterback what we might have to trade with the Giants or get in front of the Giants or whatever else to get a guy I mean the because because you got right. the Vikings the the Broncos and the Raiders lined up Boom, 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 11, 12, 13. So that's sixth spot. If the Cardinals don't trade, if the Chargers don't trade, then the Giants become the focal point. And, hey, we're thinking about taking a quarterback. Now, you know, see, that that's a reason to not do a deal with the Cardinals or the Chargers because we know you're not going to take a quarterback. So nobody's going to do a deal with you. Go ahead and take your receiver. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about quarterback later. Then here come the Giants. Hey, you know, we're thinking about a quarterback here. That may be a greater impetus for Vikings, Broncos, Raiders to call the ball and move up. So that may be what they're trying to set up. I, I, You've talked about that before, yes, and I we think have. you're on to something yeah, there. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like the Giants and New England are dangling that out as a possibility. Now, we'll, we'll see where that goes. But, you know, the, the more and we get closer here, the more I feel like – we know Caleb Williams won, and I'm starting to feel like it's Jaden Daniels, too, to Washington, period. And now we'll see that's where the draft will get interesting. And that's where I, I do believe, you know, we're going to start to see some fireworks and some action and some calls made that, that can make the first round a lot of fun. One last thing about, about Jones before we take a break, yeah. and I was reluctant to even mention this, but, like, some of the bot accounts on Twitter that cover football were acting like his – press conference just say like there's there's something wrong with him i because of his eyes being notice. wide and being yeah, like that i didn't he's always I mean, been like that he's always been a little bit googly eyed and like that when you know, I ever see him right that, that that's what he is i didn't think it was any different look uh i know what I, you know people are referring I, to they're just but. desperate to take anything and turn it into something that will trend desperate the, the, and he's a the, guy the that people like to tear twist down the dumbest shit right to turn it into something that will trend they'll take your words out of context they'll put meaning to something that isn't there they'll do anything they can to make it trend on twitter it it really is it's it's a sad state of affairs. well twitter will Let's, pay them right they'll pay them now right or something like that isn't that kind of how I, it goes I, down i think it pays does for engagement i hey let, let me tell you something i i'm waiting for hey elon where's my check i haven't gotten a check I, I, you know, we got a shitload of followers and I don't get a check for engagement. And I don't even think about that. The only thing I think about is pulling the plug on our Twitter account. Frankly, that's all I think about. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.